yet another eBay special, a cheap USB-powered charger for nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cells. And I've done a little bit of premature exploration in this, and it's got its quirks. However, let's plug it in and see what results we get. This one was fairly cheap. They've kind of got rid of the cable and it's got the connector straight on it. I guess that if you've got a suitable power supply, you could just plug this straight into it and dangle it from the wall. I'm not sure how strong that would be. If it might just dangle and drop out, particularly with the weight of all the cells in it. However, if I plug it in, two things happen. A little red LED glows in here and it passes 240 milliamp, uh, milliamps into the cells. However, if you remove a cell, the current goes down a little bit. Remove another one. No change in current. Remove another one. So if I can remove another one, it goes down a tiny bit. And in reality, uh, all the cell positions are just connected in parallel in here. So it's just basically providing, well, presumably one resistor for the whole lot. It is limiting the current, though. This is good. It's not doing anything too weird. Let's open it up and explore the insides. I see some clips here. I'll get a screwdriver and undo the clips. It looks as though they undo like this. They do undo like that. What else is holding this shut? Is it being held shut by pins, maybe? Oh yes, there are pins in there. Let's uh, pop those pins out. Ooh, and this uh, kind of clamping... Oh, are there more pins in the connect USB connector? Is it glued or something? Oh no, that plastic's going through the connector. The actual connector is part of the circuitry. Really? Oh... Okay, is this going to come off at all? Am I supposed to pull this shell off? I don't think it is. I think I may have to use unreasonable force. I just have used unreasonable force to kind of snap that off the look of it. Oh, that's not great. That is very minimalist design. Right, tell you what, I'm going to have to cut a wire here. I shall cut a wire. And then hinge it up like this to reveal the circuit board. There's a diode. Yeah, that, uh, that metal shell has literally been slipped. Hold on, let's get the pliers and see if we can rip it off. Rip it off. There we go. Oh, the circuit board itself is part of the connector. How low can you go? I mean, it's good, but it's bad. Let's take a closer look at this. One moment, please. Well, that didn't take long to reverse engineer. It has been reverse engineered. Let's resume. I'll ignore what it says in the back of the case here. It says uh, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz. No, it's just 5 volts. And it says 120 milliamps. I'm guessing this is just a case that has been copied for, or repurposed from another product. So the circuitry is very simple. Let me zoom down now. Not there's much to see. Here is the bare end of the circuit board that goes into the USB connector. The positive goes to an LED and also to this diode and then out to the positive to the cells. The negative goes via this resistor to the LED and then via this 12 ohm resistor that's 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 and 0 as the decimal multiplier so it's just 12 uh, and that goes out to the batteries. Oh, 102, 10 and 2 zeros, 1000 ohms. Let's bring in the schematic. Not that it's really needed, is it? Anything else worth mentioning about this? The data connections are not connected. This is good because that means that there's no way you can negotiate a higher voltage, which would be just as well, really. This is it. The USB supply came in, the LED across that supply with its resistor, uh, the diode, which is standard 1 amp diode, going out to the positives of the cells, and the 12 ohm resistor going out to the negatives. The resistor could theoretically go anywhere in the circuit, just to uh, basically, you could put it up here, it's in a series circuit. But the downside of this is that if you were to put in one cell that was fully charged right up to the hill, maybe it had been charging for a while and then you just thought, I'll pop another cell in that's pretty flat and you stuck it in another position, you'd bridge them together and you could get quite high current flow. But having said that, one of the joys of nickel metal hydride cells is they spend most of their life at roughly 1.2 volts. So there's not going to be a massive current flow. The connections, you've just got this spring plate for the negative. And the indented plate for the positive, that is it. Could be useful for the contacts, for the case, or as a battery charger. It's not going to be a disaster. 
Also interestingly, because the open circuit voltage will be about oh, just over four volts. Technically speaking, although it's really not recommended, you could put a protected double A lithium cell in as long as a protected one. And it would charge it up to the point of cut off on its over voltage protection. Not the correct way to charge these, particularly given that some of these lithium cells with a little gold protection PCB in the end, sometimes the PCB is blank and it is a fake protection circuit. But that is it. That is the super duper cheap uh, USB charger. Uh, quite neat construction, I have to say, even for its, for its penny pinching. Um, quite unusual that the circuit board just lays in like that and then gets clamped down by the case uh, and then the metal housing just slipped on over that oh I've broken a bit of metal housing off I think that's the bit that may have been in between this plastic here but quite a, a minimalist construction very easy for them to make very cheap for them to make and I guess that's what it's all about it is a very cheap simple charger uh, just designed to do the job and be manufactured as cheaply as possible and for that you know it's impressive but not really 100% recommended